What's up, world? Okay, I got a lot on my mind right now, and I'm a little on edge, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Fantasy football. It's great, right? Football is a beautiful game. Add fantasy to the front of it, and it's amazing. It makes me research every aspect of the NFL season, from who's getting off the injured list to what players have been getting more ball time recently, which also makes me an impenetrable force in any discussion involving football. It keeps me glued to my TV and my computer all Sunday long. Yeah, I guess that's good. It makes a $20 bet last the length of the entire football season that sends me on a roller coaster ride of up and down emotions that would make a schizophrenic psychopath look like Mother Teresa. It makes a Bears Vikings game that I would normally not give two shits about thrilling as fuck because I have Sidney Rice and the Bears defense playing. But all that being said, fuck you, fantasy football. I hate you. See, the problem is, while I may be managing these teams, they're not actually playing for me because they don't know who I am, so they could give a shit what they do for me. They're more interested in doing what need be done to help their real team win. And that might not call for them running to the end zone on every single play. The players that usually just play for their own stats usually get outed pretty quickly. So while I'm looking for Maurice Jones Drew to plow in the end zone and put six points on the board for my team, he might take a knee at the one and preserve the clock for the Jaguars so they could kick a winning field goal with one second left. Fuck you, fantasy football. I hate you. Here's a couple examples of why fantasy football hates me this season. Randy Moss. You are the top-rated receiver in the league. You're number three all-time in touchdown receptions. You're a freaking legend and a no-brainer to start every single week on my team. And yet, you give me negative two points in elimination week. Negative two points! And does it help that I'm playing Andre Johnson? who scores two touchdowns and gets 180 yards receiving in the first half alone. And how do you battle that? You get 16 yards and a fumble. You're like 6'6 six, six and fast as hell. Do something. Fuck you, fantasy football. I hate you. Ben Roethlisberger. I get you on both my teams with seemingly a steal in the ninth round and thus contemplate starting you every single week against another qualified quarterback. You know what makes those decisions easier? If the team you're playing that week sucks. The Chiefs suck. The Raiders suck. The Cleveland Browns fucking suck. The Browns will score a touchdown for you if you look at them the right way. But nope, give me zero for touchdowns when my ass is on the line in a playoff match. Ah! Fuck you, fantasy football. I hate you. Jason Witten, you are the top ranked tight end in the league come draft time. I draft you in the fifth round. That's one round higher than you're supposed to draft a tight end. But I figure it's worth it if I have the best tight end on my team every single week. You know what good tight ends do? They score touchdowns. You have one touchdown the entire season. One! You know how fantasy points work? Nothing you do means shit if you don't get into the end zone. You need to have like a ridiculously spectacular game where you get like 120 yards. I don't care how well you block on the inside. I don't care how many five and outs you pick up for first downs. Nothing you do means shit for me if you don't get into the end zone. It's not all your fault though. Tony Romo sucks balls at getting you the ball. I know I have him on my team also. Fuck you, fantasy football. I hate you. And then trades worked out spectacularly for me this season. Wes Welker had seven total fantasy points in the first four weeks of the season combined. Reggie Bush had 11. It seemed reasonable to send these two away in a deal that brought me Calvin Johnson, a top five ranked receiver on every expert's chart. You know what Calvin Johnson does the first week on my team? He gets injured in the first quarter. Then he gets me a whopping six points over the next five weeks combined. Meanwhile, Welker and Bush can be found every single week making memorable highlights where they actually score touchdowns. Fuck you, fantasy football. I hate you. Deshaun Jackson, one total yard of offense, two weeks combined. One offensive yard. What is that, like a freaking trip? Following which, I'm offered a trade, sending him away for Brandon Jacobs and Terrell Owens. So I go for it. Guess who immediately decides to start burning defenses for 80-yard runs as soon as the trade happens? I'm talking running all over teams. He's dancing in the end zone. He's jerking. He's doing, like, the eagle thing. He's doing the electric boogaloo shit. He's doing this move. And guess who decides they're old as shit and suck balls all of a sudden? You guessed it. Fuck you, fantasy football. I hate you. Now, I love what fantasy has done for me the past three years when it's won me money. And it's given me a lot more to watch when I watch football. I need that. I'm a Niners fan. But after this frustrating season of everything I'm doing going completely wrong, are you kidding me? And losing matchups to managers who spend half the time 
with their team that I do. Like Justino, for instance. Justino actually named his team Justino, whose most genius move of the season was to skip the draft and let Auto Draft take over, and thus bringing him some fantasy studs that he would never have even heard of, like Chris Johnson and Matt Shaw. Fuck you, fantasy football! I fucking hate you! Fuck you, fantasy football. Why do I love you so much? I hate you. Ah! Ah! Fantasy football, I love you. But fuck you, I hate you. Damn. Alright, good stuff. I'll see you next season. Bet you, bet you, bet you feeling like the world is yours, right? Whose world 